to the Retro Wave. I am your host, El Tiburon, a.k.a. Retro Tiburon, on all the social medias. And this month, we're uh, giving thanks. It's Survivor Series time. And with me, it's not Retro Tiburon, even though it says it in the corner there. That is not Retro Tiburon. That is the one and only Mr. One Night Dance, Mr. 24-7. Mr. Uh, you can wine and dine me with ta- with uh, Jack in the Box tacos. Sexy Chino. What's going on, Chino? I'm good, man. Th- thank you for having me again. And yes, regular tacos rule. <laughs> no, from actually Jack in the Box. I kind of feel like you would probably, instead of a big Thanksgiving uh, dinner, you would prefer some uh, a bucket of uh, Jack in the Box tacos. Yeah, that, that, that sounds actually good. You know, just no no hot sauce. You know? I would die out on that for sure. Yeah, yeah. So so this month, um, you know, we, we've we've uh, gone through some pay per views, favorite pay per view matches, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, and you know what better thing to talk about than the Survivor Series, our favorite Survivor Series matches of all time, since we're in the in the month of Thanksgiving. So um, before we get to our matches, I want to ask you, like. What, what does the Survivor Series mean to you? Uh, Survivor Series stands for tradition, you know. It's, and a lot of people forget this. Survivor Series was before WrestleMania. Oh, was it? Yes, it I was. didn't know that. Yeah, think 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 about it. It's like, hold on, no, no. I have a button for that. Hold on, hold on. Oh no, I don't know. I'm I sorry. did not know that. I did not know that. Okay, I misunderstood that. I mean, I'm sorry. It's before SummerSlam. Oh, okay. I was like, what? No, Survivor Series yeah. was before, uh, before <laughs> WrestleMania. Uh, okay. Yeah, like because remember, because remember, like Survivor Series, then they had like the SummerSlam '89 because like it was, it was like I believe '80 '87 Survivor Series. Remember? All right, hold, hold, hold it right there. Let me. I just noticed we don't have a. Light pointing at us. Of course, we're live here, people. We're, we're live. live we're live. <laughs> it looks like we're just like. Light. So we can get some light. No, oh, we got BJ distorted. it. I think we'll be able to distort it. I think it'll fix. It. You sure? There we go. Yeah, because we looked all dark. I, I think uh, I think because like it, we we li- we're in California, so we kind of got sun done. We'll do it live. Hold on. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. <laughs> I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. We were, we were look like uh, witnesses, like or victims from like one of those hard copy episodes. We were like in the shadows. <laughs> yeah. So th- so back to the what were you saying about the Survivor Series? Oh. It's tradition. Yes, tradition, and I. Uh, I did mess up. You can call it a botch if you want, but uh, botchamania. Yeah, about throwing a botch machine. But uh, yeah, like Survivor Series was there before SummerSlam, and they and a lot of people think the Survivor Series it's not even secondary, but uh, Survivor Series was around before SummerSlam. So Survivor Series has that tradition, even though a lot of it has changed. They they still do the, um, the tag matches once in a while, or they actually put them together because. Because nowadays it feels like it's Raw versus SmackDown. One one year it was like Raw, SmackDown versus NXT. Are they still doing that? Raw versus SmackDown? They might be doing that this year, but I don't know. Because things keep changing on that company. But yeah, so I'm telling you, Survivor's is tradition. And you also got to understand the people, the Undertaker made his debut at the Survivor Series. So that's got to tell you about tradition. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what what was that? 1990, right? So 30, 33 years. Like, we were just, uh, what, 10 years old, 12 years old, 13 years old. We were just kids when The Undertaker debuted on WWF TV. Yeah, for, for me, Survivor Series was always fun because I felt like you got to see guys in the ring that you normally wouldn't see wrestle each other. Like, you know, sometimes you would have, you know, you, you would have your main event guys that, that would be headlining the their team, right? The Hulkamaniacs, the Ultimate Warriors. But, you know, you had to fill out the teams with, like, lower card guys. And sometimes that, that's what I like them when you got to see, like, 
not calling Rick Martell a lower card guy, but I never really got to see Martell versus Hogan. And there was a, a match where they wrestled together. I was like, oh, cool, Martell versus Hogan. Or um, I don't know, like, you know, you know what I mean? Sometimes you get to see guys that would probably never wrestle each other. So that was always like cool to me. Yeah, because like um, you think about the matches, it was like sometimes they put random people together. You're like, but sometimes those feuds that they were building were actually put into Survivor Series with matches, you know? Yeah. So that was the good. That like, what was it? 89 had Demolition, Jake the Snake Roberts, and Hulk Hogan versus the Million Dollar Team, which was Zeus. Uh, the million dollar man in the oh, no, no, no. go back, go back and say that the correct way. How was it edited into that? Oh, come on, man. and Zeus, <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing you loved about the survivors. If I want to make a oh, yeah, and then there's Zeus, or like, or like when they had to literally uh, cut it out, and the Canadian earthquake. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was what was that? That one was 88 <laughs> or 89, right? I think that was. <laughs> And, but it would be like, uh, what was it? Uh, the warlord, the barbarian, and Zeus. <laughs> like the audio level was like all off. <laughs> for for those that know, you know, you know what we're talking about. Yeah, you get it. You definitely yeah. get that. Um, yeah. So so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna rank our our five favorite Survivor Series matches, and this is gonna be all time. So we could pick something. From last year, we can pick something from the first Survivor Series, something from the 90s. It's going to be, we're going to run the gamut. Um, but, um, you know, as always, we have to pay pay the sponsor. So we're going we're gonna to take a quick commercial break and come right back. America's Homecoming Week continues with Bugs Bunny's Hot Tips for a Perfect Thanksgiving. First, find the perfect bird, and above all, stay calm. It's Bugs Bunny's Thanksgiving Diet next. What do you think Bugs Bunny's Thanksgiving Diet is? Uh, it has nothing to do with Elmer Fudd. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say probably a lot of carrots, right? Well, yeah, because they do get low fat in there, and actually carrots are considered vegetables, so. There you go. So, so yeah, we're going to go from number five to number one. Um, Chino's the guest, so he's going to go first. And, uh, you know, because this is a very uh, low-budget podcast here, we, we couldn't find a clip of, of this promo on YouTube because, you know, WWE kind of wiped that all out. Uh, so we're going to play the promo. Hopefully you can hear it in the background of Sexy Chino's number five favorite Survivor Series match. Say the odds look to be stacked against you in the grand finale match of survival. Hulkster is your team of three against their five. Well, you know something, little dude. We're not too worried about the odds being stacked against us. You know, the way I count this thing, brother, is those five over there are against the warrior, my man Tito Santana, the star favorite Hulkster, and millions of millions of those little Hulkamaniacs out there, brother. You know, this is what it's all about, brother. I've been around the WWF quite some time now, and the holster has always ruled, but never before have I seen such intensity in a man like the ultimate warrior brother to rise to the top so fast, to take it all the way, and to have so many little, little warriors following him, brother. And as far as Tito Santana goes, brother, me and the Ariba man have been around since day one, and as far as I'm concerned, me, Tito, the ultimate warrior, we're going to survive this thing, brother. This is what I told him about, baby, the grand finale. Million dollar man. The missionaries, you turkeys, the odds are not against us, baby. We are here for one reason, to survive, baby, the grand finale. Yeah. We are taking this many footsteps to get this far. The Hulkamaniacs that made the sacrifice, and the warriors that follow me that fell, like skeletons that made their sacrifices. They walk with us into this battle, and we take all those that believe in one purpose, to do combat with those that believe they are the greatest. You power and glory, a reminder that we feed off such things. And you, Rick DeMar Martel, no competition to the powers that we possess in Hulkamania and Warrior Wildness and Arriba Dante. Hey, I feel about it, dudes. This is the 11th hour, brother, and we're walking that fine razor's edge. 
between greatness or disaster. And the way things stack up with all those Hulkamaniacs, with everything running wild out there, brother, there is no way they're going to beat us. The energy, the focus, the mind, the body, and soul. What's it going to do when our team survives and wipes out you dudes out there? There we go, sexy Chino. Hopefully you guys could hear that. Uh, so you have at number five, you got the final, sur what was it called? The grand finale match of survival. Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, and Chico, Tito Santana versus the Visionaries and Ted DiBiase. Why is this your number five pick? Well, that was only done once, if you ever thought about that. And that's historic by itself. But like you were talking about, it gave Tito to be a chance teaming up with Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior at the time, which Tito would not have gotten that chance if this match would never happen. And also, in this match, it was really fast-paced because, like, the first thing you see in this match is Tito hitting the flying forearm on the Warlord. <laughs> and nobody saw that coming. Yeah, it was... Um, this This is uh, not in my top five honorable mention. It almost was in my top five because I'm, you know, I'm a Hulkamaniac for those of... I'm sure people that listen to this podcast and have seen me on YouTube... I love the Hulkster. Look at my damn hat. I love the Hulkster. And it's got Tito Santana. Come on now. Like, this is, this is like a wet, wet dream of mine. <laughs> and then, then there's the warrior, you know. R.I.P. warrior. Not a big warrior guy. But it was, like I mentioned earlier, I kind of gave away one of this match. We got to see on the Visionaries, Rick Martel, Power and Glory, and the, I mean, the Warlord, uh, he was he was out of there pretty quickly, but uh, we I I love that that I got to see like Hogan in there with Paul Roma with Hercules, uh, with with Rick Martel. I'm a huge Rick Martel fan, so I was like, oh cool, I, I get to see the model Rick Martel versus Hulk Hogan. So great pick. I I I really like this match. I love this match. Yeah, I I believe like a lot of people forget that this match you had to win the match to get in. So it, it felt more of a competition, you know? It's like, all oh, the... Because usually Survivor Series just go, okay, you have your match. But whoever won from the teams got to go in into the fi final finale, grand finale match. And that was really cool because, like, you knew the guys were tired, but then, you know, man, they're going to put it to the next level because they were getting a second chance and, and it was like, who's going to take it? And when you put Hogan and Warrior, it's like, okay, it's a good chance. But like you said, it's a difference because Rick Martel got a chance to be there and and tito santana and and like you said poor roma dude how many times did poor roma get in the ring with hulk hogan think about that that was probably this was probably it i mean this was probably it and and i um i mean i was and i remember as a kid i was bummed out that that tito didn't survive but you know it was hogan and and warrior were the face of the company they were the top two guys so it almost felt like it was like uh a celebration of like their their two top guys to like showcase these are our two top guys right yeah you're right about that and you know when you heard the promo for the uh, like the match tito and warrior and hogan it is like the the warriors are really a real dirty isn't yeah. that like kind of like french or something maybe, yeah. maybe i'm wrong in yeah i was like what since when is a uh, tito santana french <laughs> <laughs> and arriba derchi. And arriba derchi. Like, uh, could you, yeah, you could have said arriba or like uh, muchos grande or whatever. I mean, no. I mean our RIP to the warrior. I've said this in the past. I was never a, a, a warrior guy because he beat my guy Hulk Hogan. But part of the reason I didn't like him was because his promos never made sense to, to me. And here, arriba derchi. Like, come on now. Like, I mean, Hogan says, me and the Ariba man. But you know, like, Hogan, he says, Tito and I, we go way back. We're, we're like day one or whatever, which is true, right? They had been around for together for a long time in the the company. But Ariba Derchi, what the <laughs> hell was that? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, because, like, remember, like, when you say the day one, you talk about WrestleMania 1, too. Because Tito was part of WrestleMania 1, and so was Hogan. Yeah. Tito's a, a day one guy. All right. The great pick. That was like almost on my list for sure. Uh, we're going to go uh, now to my number five favorite Survivor Series match of all time. Psycho Sid's got a pretty good fan base. A lot of oh, here. 
Yes, indeed. Not just here in Madison Square, but all over the world. That who you he, hear coming to the ring, we got Psycho Sid. At number five, I've got Psycho Sid versus the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, 1996. Funny thing is, uh, Chino and I just watched this match right before we hit the record button. So it cracked my top five like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> it wasn't even in my top five. But it cracked my top five now. Uh, nine, this was 1990, 1995, like I said. 96. 96. 96. So this was uh, Shawn Michaels was the champion. He, I think he had been champion since WrestleMania 12. He goes to Survivor Series and loses the championship to Sid. And, and I'm not going to lie. Part, part of the reason I have this match on my list is because I, I used to hate Shawn Michaels. Like when he was a baby face, I hated Shawn Michaels. I couldn't stand the character. I couldn't stand his fans, the click. Uh, I remember even going to house shows and taking like some pretty taking one time. I took a pretty nasty sign about what I thought about Shawn Michaels and and his click. And they took away that poster. It was over in your in uh, your neck of the woods over there at the Arrowhead Pond, what used to be called the Arrowhead Pond. Uh, yeah, they didn't let me take that poster. And I wasn't a big Shawn Michaels fan. And I remember watching this match with like my friend Billy, uh, another friend Angel, and we all hated Shawn Michaels. So we were all like brooding for Sid. And and it, for those of you guys that have seen that this match, the whole like this was an MSG, Madison Square Garden. They all turned on Shawn Michaels and they were booing Shawn Michaels and cheering for Sid. Even when Sid hit Jose Lothario, super sock. Jose Lothario with a camera and almost died of a heart attack. They were cheering for Sid. So, um, yeah. I, I So part of the part of the reason I like it is the crowd reaction, the emotions. I think we were talking about that while watching the match. Like, this, there's emotion. There's emotion here. Shawn Michaels, I think you pointed out. Look, Shawn just looked at the crowd and they they emoted. You know, there was emotion you could hear. Like, they were there was disdain for Shawn Michaels. Um, so, so, so part of that is the match, the emotion, and part of it is the nostalgia. This is the retro wave. Like, just, I remember my friends and I like going crazy, like yeah, like cheering, like the Lakers won an NBA championship when Sid beat Shawn Michaels. So, yeah, any thoughts on this one? Um, yeah, this this match was very interesting at the time because Shawn Michaels was getting booed at a lot of places, and they wanted they wanted him to be the top guy still, but um. Yeah, like Sid was coming up. And what's funny about this match is originally, if it's true like what they were saying, it was supposed to be Vader. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Vader was supposed to beat him for the belt, right? Beat Shawn Michaels for the belt. Yeah, I think that was the plan they were going by. But then like Shawn's incident with uh, Vader at su SummerSlam didn't help the cause. So then Sid got put into the plan and then the crowd got behind Sid because like MSG is a weird uh, crowd player because, like, if they don't like you, they don't like you. So, but, like, you can see, like, at the there was still some Shawn Michaels fans, but there was a lot of more Sid fans. Or are they were they were they Sid fans, or they were just against Shawn Michaels time because they couldn't take it anymore. The that he was like so much of a of a uh, good guy and giving that that expression, even though at the time. Behind the scenes, he wasn't the, uh, the good guy that everybody wanted. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, funny enough you, that you bring that up. I was just watching that biography on Shawn Michaels. Was that by a and &E, I think? The biography on Shawn Michaels, like the story of Shawn Michaels. And yeah, it was talking about this time that he was like pretty hopped up on pills and was kind of like a pain to deal with. And not very, very, a uh, very good team play player. And, um, yeah, but like back then I just hated, I didn't hate Shawn Michaels. Obviously I didn't know any of the backstage stuff, but I hated Shawn Michaels because of the character. I didn't like the dancing and the, the sexy boy and all that. So I, he wasn't, he wasn't for me. N now that I look back in ret retrospect, you can't deny 
Shawn Michaels probably top two, top three greatest like in ring performers of all time, American in ring performers of all time. I don't think you can deny that. No, you can't deny that. And uh, and you gotta understand, ninety six. A lot of people forget that he had that. I mean. Um, they really don't see that he had some really good matches because he faced mankind at, at man uh, in your house mind games, That's and that one. match was really good in That's Philadelphia. Great... And you know that crowd in Philly's hard, and they yeah. loved that match. That was a great match. That, that's why I say, like, even back then, I watched all these pay per views, rooting for the other whoever Shawn Michaels was was wrestling to beat him. But at the same time, like, man, even as a teenager, I was like, man, these are some like freaking great matches even as much as i hate sean michaels um yeah so that's what i have at uh number five we're gonna go now to chino's number four pick life as a wwe superstar is unpredictable over the past week i defended my wwe championship in multiple continents against multiple opponents and when did that rain start? Right here in Manchester, England. And what is my reward for being WWE champion? To go toe to toe at Survivor Series for the second year in a row against the Universal Champion, Brock Lesnar. A man who is more like a beast, a destroyer. Unlike any opponent I've ever set foot in a WWE ring with. And last year, I gave him everything I had. A 450 splash, a Pele kick, calf crusher, the phenomenal forearm. And it wasn't enough. And most think that's the same way it's gonna play out this year. But like I said, being a WWE superstar is unpredictable. So I am telling you right here, right now, at Survivor Series, I will beat Brock Lesnar. That's not a prediction. That's a spoiler. Because I am the phenomenal. At number four, Chino, you've got AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar. 2018, right? 2018 match. Why is this at your number four pick? Um, I like the match because it gave Styles a chance to show that um he can hang with Brock Lesnar. And but the thing about Brock Lesnar is like people forget that he's really good when he wants to be good, <laughs> you know. But it became a like one thing about the business in general, like matches like this, is like you gotta believe. That it's believable. So when you watch a match, oh, Brock Lesnar can kill somebody. Yeah, you can. But the whole thing is like, are you going to believe that somebody can stand up to Brock Lesnar? And the way they built this match and it happened, you know, back and forth, it made a lot of sense because they, oh, AJ Styles working his way through that match. And then it made sense when. He hit Brock here, he hit Brock there, and how they worked it and and how the how basically the match went through. So I like to me, I, I like looking at matches and go, oh, okay, this is good. Cause I like looking at matches and going, okay, this makes sense. This this literally makes sense. Okay. I can understand where they're trying to go with it. I as a just you want to get lost. That's the other thing about wrestling in general. You want to get lost in the match. And in this match, I got lost because like, well, even though Brock is way bigger than AJ Styles, AJ hit him the right way. And it made sense for what he was doing in that, in that match in general. So overall, that's why I liked it because like it showed a good way of telling the story of AJ Styles with Brock Lesnar. And it, and I tell you when Brock is good, Brock is good. Yeah, I think you've told me that a bunch of times. I think we've talked about it on previous episodes where we're like, I think I brought it up with the Dean Ambrose match Lesnar had with him. I forgot what, what WrestleMania. I think we talked about most disappointing WrestleMania matches. What WrestleMania was that? That was the one in Dallas. Yeah, so 
really yeah like that was an example to me of like oh man this is gonna be a cool match lesnar versus ambrose ambrose is crazy he, he'll do anything take anything but it was just suplex city for 15 minutes <laughs> and then an f5 so uh, yeah I, I i remember watching this match and like you said like you know with wrestling we, we, it's about suspending disbelief right correct if if you see aj styles and lesnar side by side you're probably think you would automatically be like, there's no way AJ Styles, this dude could beat up Brock Lesnar. But that's the beauty of wrestling, right? If you suspend the disbelief, they, they can they pull you in, they suck you into the match, into the story. Like, oh, the, the little guy, David, can beat Goliath, and he's rocking him and he's hitting him with the springboard flying forearms and the Pele kicks and all that. And he's she's chipping away at Lesnar. I think he was working his leg, right? Wasn't he working his leg a lot for the calf crusher at some point? Yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Like, it's true. It's like, what do you do with a big guy? You take away his legs, like Joe Gorilla Monsoon says. Like, I believe it was Gorilla. It's like when you're on the ground, everyone's the same size. Yeah. Yes, I do remember this one. It was a. It, did Lesnar win the the championship? Yeah, let's let well. I don't I don't think it was for the title. It was, no, it was just they, like a match. Because like they were both because here here's a little background if, if people forget is the fact that when AJ won the title, the original match was supposed to be Jim, Ginger Mahal versus Brock Lesnar. Oh, that's right. And then that's AJ right. won the title, he became the contender to go into that match because it was a SmackDown versus Raw, you a WWE championship versus Universal Championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. This this was a yeah, fun match. I mean, AJ Styles, probably one of the best right there to to be in the ring. Did you know that one time at at a Frankincense? So for those that don't know, Frankincense is, is a collectible store out here in SoCal. Um, that one time, um, they used to run re- wrestling shows. One time I was in the urinal and AJ Styles was next to me taking a leak. Did you know that? That's your great story, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Has nothing to do with this Lesnar AJ Styles match, but I thought thought I'd throw that in there. All right, well, great pick. That was your number four pick. I, I'm gonna go to my number five pick now. I mean, sorry, my number four pick. You live, right? We're live, pal. Is Daddy Cool up to the challenge? You better believe it. Well, the stipulations are now in place, Brett. That's right. Gorilla Monsoon has decided on three things. No count out, no time limit, and most importantly, no disqualification. Man against man, Brett, for the third time, and in my estimations, the last. We'll find out finally who's the best. Brett, the excellence of execution against Big Daddy Cool. I don't like your odds. At number four, I've got Big Daddy Cool Diesel versus Bret Hart. Uh, 1995 Survivor Series for the championship belt. Diesel was the champ. I think he had been champ for about a year, right? I think that the year before he won, won it from Backland, like right after Survivor Series. It was like almost a little bit over a year, right? Um, and he faces Bret, the, the contender, and Man, I just, you know what, I I remember watching this live too. It just felt like a fight. That's what I really loved about the match. Like, it didn't feel like a, like a wrestling match. It felt like almost like a brawl, like a fight. I think it was, I think there was no DQ. It was only pinfall or submission. And um, I, I don't know. I just lo- loved that, how like raw it felt. And you wouldn't see matches like this usually on, on WWF. At some point, Brett ties like a, I don't know, like a electric cable around Diesel's ankle and ties him to the post, and it's just like hitting him with elbows. And he's just, of course, you know, Brett, excellence of execution. He is just trying to take out Diesel's legs, like, like how you mentioned in the previous match. You're, everybody's the same height when you're laying down. So, great match, man. I love this match, and I I love um, where Diesel, the shock value, where Diesel pushes Brett off the apron. And he goes through the table. I think that's the first time I ever saw anybody go through a table, like watching wrestling. Um, 
for me at least, I had never seen anyone go through a table. So I remember seeing that and being like, oh, what the? F like, what's going on? He threw him through a table. Like, he's dead. You just you didn't see that stuff. Now you see it, what, three, four times a pay-per-view, <laughs> pay <-per -view, laughs> right? But, um, yeah, I love this match. And I expect, I always was a huge fan of Bret Hart. Um, even when I wasn't a big fan of him back then also because he talks smack about the Hulkster. But um, I love the, the, the selling of Bret. And at the end, he's dead, right? Because he went through the table. He's dead. And Diesel like wants to jackknife him, but he almost you see almost see some pity in the face of Diesel, like ah, oh, he's done. Brett can't even like stand up to take a jackknife. Diesel goes to like almost help him up. Bret Hart, uh, quick, uh, small package, and beats him for the belt. And then of course Diesel jackknifes him over and over after. But I, man, I just I love this match. I I was watching it earlier today. Still still holds up. Great match. Probably Kevin Nash's best match that. That I ever saw. Well, yeah, you 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 talk about this match. This match meant a lot because, um, like you said, it was the first time that they went through a table in the WWF slash WWE. Because, uh, yeah, they used to do this at ECW. Yeah, yeah, they used to go through tables at ECW. But um, yeah, it was a different time. But the, the thing with that match in general. Is that it showed more of a vicious side of the diesel. It wasn't the smiling diesel that Vince was trying to get, you know, because he felt like everybody had to have that role. But if he felt more edgy and yeah. like, because giving him the no disqualification, no count out, no time limit, it made that match more edgy. And uh, when you have more of an edgy match like that, you get you can get more aggressive because then you because when you have disqualification you have to like be waiting for the count but when you don't have that you can get more aggressive so that could so that's what diesel did he started going back to his old ways because if you see when he gets done after he gave him the power bounds he goes i'm back <laughs> he yeah. doesn't he doesn't grab the mic and said it but you they put the camera he says i'm back so and also, some people said that that's like uh, a version of a start of a pre-start of the Attitude Era. Yeah, I yeah, I just remember like at this time, it was like I was a teenager, probably like 14, 13 around there, and and you know I, I grew up watching like renting all the the videos from the eighties, and it you know very cartoony, very over the top, very you know it was just very cartoony, and then this started to feel like grittier. Like around this time, it was there, there was still like Doink and Bill Clinton impersonators <laughs> in the audience. There was still like a lot of a lot of cheese, a lot of cheese. But yeah, you like you're right. You're starting to see like the like the foundation for what was the Attitude Era. I was not a big fan of Attitude Era. I thought it was raunchy, but it was just more. It was getting more real, more grittier, and even when. When a Brett gets a three count, Diesel sits up and he says, "Motherfucker!" Like you see, <laughs> he's like he like he got me, and he's been, and then he started jackknifing him. And yeah, shortly after that, Diesel was gone. Right, that's when he jumped to WCW. Yeah, a little bit after that, but man, this is my I don't know. Can you think of like a better Diesel match, Kevin Nash match? Better than that, or just as good? No, I, I really think like they always said Brett brings a lot out of wrestlers because they usually say like Brett always has great matches, but it's just like, yeah, like Nash, a Diesel. I mean, he, he literally, they literally put a lot into that match because remember the other matches they had, it was a, what they had a King of the Ring match and then the Amber got involved. Then they had the Royal Rumble match and everybody in the world got involved in that one too. Yeah. So, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's like this match was legit. Like it was, it was the the final chapter of that, you know. Because after that, Brett went in a different direction, and you know Kevin Nash until like February, like Diesel. That's when he got his match at the Royal Rum uh, at the at the In Your House in February, because it started a thing with the Undertaker at the at the what's his, at the Royal Rumble. 
But if you think about it, it was December's in your house where it literally started because the Undertaker actually said he wanted the belt. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but great match. Still holds up for those of you guys that haven't seen it. Great match. Great brawl. Uh, another great. We have like, we've had already three little guy versus big guy matches. We've had Sid versus HBK, AJ Styles versus Brock, and now Brett versus Diesel. So we're, we're, it's, it looks like we're a fan of the David Goliath matches when you know they're done right. Correct. And we've only had one actual team Survivor Series match. <laughs> All right, when when doing a Survivor Series uh, episode, but you know what we said? Any match, any match that was on there, who knows? We might see Sexy Chino with the uh, Clowns R Us versus the Kings Court with a uh, what's name Cheesy Queasy and Sleazy. That might make us his top five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just gonna kayfabe the top five there. <laughs> All right, that, well that was uh, my number four. We're gonna go to Chino's number three favorite Survivor Series match of all time. The opposing team. Wait a minute, what are you talking about? You haven't talked to me. I haven't seen you all day. I've been getting the British Bulldog ready to win. I told you I'd be on your side, Davey, and I'm going to stick with you all the way. Daddy, you don't have anything to worry about. I'm an honest as the day is long. I guarantee you. Well, I, I talked to him earlier on. Let me tell you something, Jim Cornette. I don't care who's on my team as long as my team wins and brings home the cash. But I told you once, and I'm going to tell you again right now, nobody crosses the Million Dollar Man. Remember it, Cornette. Ladies, 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 stop the fighting. If you're gonna fight, you got one of two choices. You like all the rest of the chicks and fight over the heartbreak kid, or you like the dudes and well fight Ahmed because he's my back door. I got news for you, boys. You better stick together because if you don't, me and Ahmed will, and we will survive. Wild card match, wild night. <laughs> what a wild two. At number three, sexy Chino, you've got a Survivor Series match. The wild card match. Who was on this team? We had Ahmed, Shawn Michaels. Psycho Sid and the British Bulldog versus Razor Ramon, Dean Douglas, Owen Hart, and Yoko Zuna. A very wild card match. Tell us about this, why this is your number three pick. In general, like I know a lot of people don't didn't really care as much. That's what you hear over the years. Like, this match was like because it was a lot, a lot of this had to do with Bill Watts. That's an old school thing, but and I what I liked about this match is like it was just different at the time. Talk about the year, right? <laughs> it was 95. Was this 96? 95. 95. 95. Yeah. It was very, it was very different, you know, and like that, that was cool. I like, and they also, the way they build it, it just gave that, uh, that big um, Survivor Series uh, debut for Ami Johnson. Yeah, I was going to say that, like, that's kind of crazy, like that. He that was his debut match. He was in there with Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon. Like he's in there, like with them. Like you're debuting and you're gonna be. We're pushing you. Like that's a lot of pressure, I would think. Yeah, just like to come out there and like, and uh, and to perform and, and like you said, going through that with that much uh, talent there. Oh, like, it's great. Yeah. But it was different, and I liked all that about that. You know, it's like it's different. It it put like uh, Razor in a different position, and then Michael's in a different position. But overall, I thought it was cool. Like you know, because like right now, it's just you stick to the same thing, unless like they're back in the like when they were doing like Survivor Series matches, Raw versus SmackDown. They used to team the bad guys with the good guys, heels with face or whatever, whichever way you want to consider it. Yeah. But I uh, I like this because back in the day they didn't do this. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't see stuff like this. Like going back to that 1990, like the grand fina finale match. One thing that I always was like, eh, once I got older, like, eh, I don't know about that. Like, how did they determine who was going to whose team? They, they should have, like, given, like, you know, the rules. Like, the winners from match through one through three will go on this team and then whatever. Like, it was a little weird because they stuck the good guys with the good guys and the bad guys with the bad guys. But, I don't know. That kind of was, you know what I'm saying? Like some of the logic there was a little like, well, how are you determining like who's going with who? Well, I think it was always like the bad guys are going to stick with the bad guys and the good guys are going to stick with the good guys. But they never said that like, or else wouldn't you like, like, okay, like if you're, you're, uh, 
Warrior or Hogan be or like Tito. Hey, I'm gonna go to this other team because this team has six, five people on it already, and we're gonna stack the deck against. It. If you could just choose who you want, what team you want to go to, you know, if you if, if it's about winning, you know. Yeah, but like think oh, look look what year it is, 1990. Yeah. Uh, you they are old school, you know. They they got that. They're not doing a wild card match. They're they're not trying to stick. The only time they were trying to do that. Because it was like at the Royal Rumble, they uh, tag teams were fighting each other. Like I believe it was a uh, eighty, either eighty nine or eighty eight. Demolition started fighting each other, and yeah. it was like, "What the heck?" Demolition's fighting each other. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, so things like that. But yeah, because like it, I believe it is eighty nine. Because like that's when uh, the Mega Bounce exploded, and that's when Savage and uh, Hogan had their ordeal at the Royal Rumble. In Houston, but like, like I'm going back to it is that at that time, people didn't go, oh, it's gonna be a bad guy versus bad guy, good guy versus good guy. It, it's they already knew that was gonna happen. Then say bad guy's gonna face bad guy, or good guy's gonna face good guy, because that was very rare back in the day. So at the time, they said, oh, the fun, the the winners or the survivors are gonna go through, but they didn't even question it. Like you're trying to say, oh, I want to get in this team because at the time it was more the bad guys are going to stick with the bad guys, the good guys are going to stick with the good guys. Yeah. Yeah. But back back to this wild card, this is an honorable mention for me. Honorable mention. It was like right there. I, I actually watched it, I think, this morning or, or last night too. And I remember like you being like, oh, what the hell? Like Dean Douglas is teaming up with Razor Ramon because they were like feuding, I think, at the, at the time. And what Sid and and Shawn Michaels on the same team with the Bulldog? Like it, it was like I thought it was really cool too. I remember really liking it. Uh, who were the survivors? Shawn Michaels and and Ahmed and Bulldog, right? They survived for their team after Yoko gets eliminated. But yeah, it was a fun match. Yeah, that was a really fun match, and like, and like I said, they used the Survivor Series for the right reasons for the debut. It built Ahmed Johnson. Oh, and he um, where where and on a scale from one to ten, where would you rate a uh, how uh, big of a wedgie Ahmed Johnson had? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you talk about Survivor Series. Are you going to uh, re- WrestleMania? Are you going to go to Rumble? <laughs> we are the Survivor Series. <laughs> <laughs> It was pretty close to a six, and I seen it worse. <laughs> uh, uh, Hercules, eat, eat your heart out. All right, well, that was your your number. What match? Num- number three match. I- I'm gonna go to my number three favorite Survivor Series match. This guy, he got as much machismo. Me. That means another loser. The one, the only. Oh no! Yeah. I called it. I called it. You left me. Show Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Macho Man Randy Savage. Savage coming in via the top. Right. So at my number three pick. I don't think they had team names for some reason at this Survivor Series. But it was Team Razor versus Team IRS. We had uh, their Razor Ramon introducing Macho Man. Uh, Macho Man, I think, was replacing Mr. Perfect on, on their team. And I like that Razor throws a little shade at Mr. Perfect and is like, my partner so perfect, he tag out before the match start. You remember that? <laughs> So we had, yeah, so Macho Man replaced Perfect. Who knows? Maybe after I tell the contestants, you can tell us what happened there. I'm sure you know. We had Razor, Macho, the one, two, three kid, and Janetti versus IRS, Diesel, um, the model, and Adam Bomb. Underrated Adam Bomb, one of my favorites. So can you tell me what, why was uh, Macho Man replacing Perfect? Um, I'm not, I either he was like, um, gonna i think it was had to do something with back maybe but uh or he was about to leave for just for a while because remember when he came back 
the other survivors is. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Uh-huh. So, so, yeah, that's what I think I could be wrong, but so I think it has something to do with back injury. Yeah, but but this is, um, man, just a fun match. I saw this one this week, too, and just the fun, like, I love this match. I love seeing Macho Man, because at this point, like, Macho was was more of a commentator. Um, I think this, uh, he gets eliminated because Co- uh, evil Kona Crush comes out and costs and distracts him. He gets eliminated, but I just always loved the Macho Man. So it was cool to just have him as a surprise guy, like the Macho Man is going to be in this match. And and my favorite, but my favorite part of the match is the ending, how they like end the match where you got the two underdogs, right? You got the ultimate underdog, the one, two, three kid, Marty Janetti up against the uh, Adam Bomb and, and Martel. And just like how cool the, how quickly like the match ends, like you think Janetti and the kid, they're done. They're outmatched. They're outpowered. And I think, what was it? Uh, I think, uh, is it uh, the kid reverses like a, a whip to the to the corner and turn and, and it gets a sunset flip on, I think it's on Martel, right? Kid tags out. Freaking Janetti sunset flips Adam Baum and he gets eliminated. So I, I love that ending. I don't know if you remember like that ending of that match. Yeah, I was like, don't remember the exact ending, but I remember them winning. And what was good about that is like um you kind of establishing again some talent, you know. That's what they did. They, they kind of established talent and like we all know Janetti's great, you know, and, and ring performer. But then like you gave the kid that little extra. Cause they remember that this is what like 90. Three or ninety four. This believe. one, yeah, ninety three. Ninety three, and you know that's when the kid was coming in, cause like, and that gave him a chance, you know. But yeah, overall, like when you think about matches like this, is like Survivor Series. A lot of people, unfortunately, like you look at the run and you see a lot of them were actually used to build people. Yeah, that's true. Cause it it, it continued the story of the underdog, the kid, you know. He always escapes. He always finds a way to escape. Yeah. But then this, this is just a fun match. I thought it was like a super fun match. Um, and I, th- I thought it was also interesting that the, the captains, IRS and, and Razor, they're out. So it's left to like, you know, Martell, the veteran, Rick Martell, and and the newcomer powerhouse, Adam Baum, and Janetti, another veteran with, with the up-and-comer, the one, two, three kid. So. And yeah, this is a fun match. I I recommend it to anybody that hasn't seen it. It's, it's just a fun Survivor Series match. Um, all right, we're we're gonna go to Chino's number two favorite Sur- Survivor Series match now. Who ain't the Continental Champion? Says Warren. His life is burning down. One best friend had to go away. One best friend. Turn on to be a real lunatic. But at Survivor Series, I will cheer Seth up. I can make him forget all his other problems. And he will get a very special gift. Only found in the United States of Neck America. A new to face. Number two, Chino, you've got Shinsuke Nakamura versus Seth Rollins from 2018. So this was for the title for title? Or what was it? No, it's like, remember, Raw versus SmackDown is more of a pride thing again. <laughs> okay, so it was just US champion versus IC champion. Who's better? Yeah, who's better, exactly. Which brand is better? You got Raw versus SmackDown. Yeah. So, so tell us about. I don't think I remember seeing this match. What do you what What do you like so much about this match? I like the fact that it was one of the first times they got to uh, wrestle each other, and it was and it was like when Nakamura was get, uh, getting really built, and Seth was st- still rolling. But um, yeah, man, it's like it's more of a mid card match at the time, but it felt more to me. I like like a main event level because such a great talent. And it it was it was just a good, great match altogether, you know. Took a story, a good back and forth. 
And yeah, that's what you want to see. You know, you want to see a competition. What's, what's that? It's like a pipe. What the hell is that? Oh, is that your phone? That's getting my phone, dude. We're live, pal. Come on. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. I want to apologize to all the listeners on YouTube and all the audio podcasts for Sexy Chino. Leaving his phone on so we can hear his notifications. I thought a pipe was breaking in the house, but it's just his <laughs> notifications. Sexy Chino will, will send everyone a, a case of beer. Make sure to send your address to uh, your retro tiburon at gmail.com. <laughs> Where were we at? Where were we at? What were we talking we're about? We're talking about the Survivor Series Nakamura versus Ted Rollins. All right. Try to gather your bearings. Where, where, did, you leave, where did you leave off? I think I was just talking about how the match was and it was well done and it felt more like a main event to me because like they didn't have to wrestle that, against each other that much and it was a just really well back and forth match. It felt like a contest, old school contest. And yeah, to me, that match was good. Like I said, that was like one of the first times they were facing each other that people knew about. So yeah, it was a fun match. And overall, you know, it's like that's what you want to put out there. You know, want to put a good contest that that looks that's uh, back and forth, and people can get lost in it. And I guess, yeah. And to me, like I, I felt that was a really good match overall. Yeah, I can't comment on it because I, I never, never saw it. But um, I mean, Nakamura. I know, I know you don't like to talk about this, but you know Nakamura personally, Shinsuke Nakamura. You guys trained over at the the dojo, I believe, right? Yeah, like in early two thousands, right? Yeah, like um, when I was Santa Monica Dojo, the New Japan Pro Wrestling Santa Monica Dojo. I, I um, when he when he was hurt, he, he was uh, they sent him over there, so that's where I met him. But yeah, he's a really cool guy, you know, very respectful guy. And I'm I'm really happy for success and all my other friends in the business. But yeah, it's just like in general, you know, a great talent is a great talent. So th this wasn't a a bias pick because you you know him personally. Oh, in a way, but uh, <laughs> but but no, honestly, you watch the match and you you you'll see like a, a really good contest. All right, sounds good. Um, yeah, so that was uh, your number two pick. I'm, I'm gonna go to my number two pick now. Well, the countdown down now to just a few days 50 World Wrestling Federation superstars all in one building assembled on teams. The Survivor Series upcoming this Thursday night. What a Thanksgiving it's going to be! Richfield Coliseum, 730, just outside of Cleveland, Ohio. There'll be a ladies' el elimination matchup. Sensational Sherry will captain one team against former champ, the fabulous Moolah, on another team. Two 10-man elimination teams. Hulk Hogan will captain one team against Andre the Giants team. There'll be a tag team elimination matchup. And, of course, the Honky Tonk Man will captain a team. Randy Macho Man Savage against your team. I know you guys have been working out. You're ready for the Survivor Series this Thursday night. Mm, yeah, unbelievably set. Yeah, a lot of the people on my team, uh, yeah, I haven't gotten along with in the past, yeah. yeah. But one thing, yeah, when we sweated against each other, when there was no more sweat, then we realized what a survivor was, yeah. And the ultimate thing in my mind happens to be the honky tonk man, because he's the guy that put the tear down Elizabeth's face, yeah, right here. And the one over there on the other side, and the multitude of, uh, yeah, focus of attention was on the honky tonk man, who's been bragging ever since. Well, this is a time where the center of attention goes back on you, man, and the freaks and the geeks. Yeah, the freaks, macho man, the freaks. I got them on my side, and you got the geeks, man. I'm telling you that the Survivor Series is the ultimate, yeah. Guess who's gonna survive? Guess who's gonna survive? I'm telling you that this is the one. This is the one that won't get away. 
because uh, Elizabeth will be there at ringside. Did you hear that right there? Yeah, she's going to be mm -hmm, there. Yeah, APB All Points Bulletin, yeah. Uh -huh. And what confidence I have, yeah. Double embarrassment to Elizabeth would be uh, brutal, yeah. But it won't happen. Thanksgiving night, the Survivor Series in the Richfield Coliseum. My team is ready, yeah. Uh -huh. They realize what must be done, and they realize what. So at number two, yeah. as, as Macho still yeah, goes on, <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to keep it short and sweet, but apparently not. But at number two, I've got, I've got Survivor Series tag team match. I don't think they had team names at this time, right? We had Captain Macho Man Randy Savage. Joining up with uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Jake the Snake, Brutus the Barber Beefcake versus uh, Team Captain Honky Tonk Man uh, versus the uh, with teaming up with Outlaw Ron Bass, King Hardy Race. The only guy that can uh, give uh, Ahmed Johnson a run for his money for a deeper wedgie, Hercules. And... Uh, Danny Davis. Was it dangerous Danny Davis or was it just Danny Davis? Dangerous Danny Davis. Yeah, so I saw this match. I had seen it like, you know, a while ago. Like I had rented the VHS and, and this match in, in, um, always like stood out for me because I think it's the opener and man, that, that crowd was like freaking on fire. Like they were ready for some WWF wrestling. They were like re ready to see like, you know, the Hulkster, the Macho Man, a DDT. So man, I just this match always stood out for me. And when I watched it again uh, in the this past week, dude, this match is freaking cool. It's just like like you said, it's just there's just like action. It's just like, all right. Like, and I think the Danny Davis, Danny Davis is kind of an underrated like heel. He was kind of like a really fun, like chicken shit heel and. He takes one hell of a DDT from Jake the Snake. <laughs> he takes a nice ass DDT. Um, yeah, so I just I thought this match was like super fun. Like the the good guys, like the crowd is just popping for everything that the good guys are doing. I think Macho Man takes out Hercules with the flying elbow. Steamboat like comes in there and he does his stuff. They're going crazy. Uh, like I said, Jake hitting that DDT, like you can hear, like, I think he's the, he hits a move on Danny Davis and the crowd like starts like getting like riled up. Like they know, like, here it comes. He's about to DDT him and he hits him with the DDT. So really fun match. I think the survivors were, was it Jake, Randy and Steamboat for those? Do you remember? I think those were the survivors. Yeah, I think so. Cause Savage did get eliminated, didn't he? Uh, no, I think he was, he wasn't there then. I don't remember, but the fun match and i i think i think no i think honky like chick runs out he's like the last guy and oh, yeah. they're just yeah, kicking he, he they're kicking out. his he ass and out. he just leaves he and honky tonk man like come on now like that guy was like super like a super fun heel to watch wrestle uh so i don't know if you remember much of this match or have any thoughts on it uh no i i i remember some of it it's like but uh what i like about what you just said is like look at the talent chick to sick robbers Randy Matchman Savage, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Yeah, that's like a that's like Hall of Fame, all Hall of Famers. It's like. like Hall of Famers right there. It's like, damn, like, and 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 we, we didn't even mention Hacksaw, and Hacksaw was like more would get a bigger crowd response than a lot of wrestlers, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. It's like look at that that uh, that team in general, you know? And yeah, it's like people. And everybody, the, sometimes they underestimate the mid-card teams. But like you said, it's like Dangerous Danny Davis, he really worked hard. you know. And a lot of people just see him, uh, he was a referee or whatever, and because it's a hard foundation ordeal. But yeah, he actually did work hard, you know. And uh, Honky Tom Man <laughs> doesn't have to do much, but he, he definitely did enough. <laughs> All he yeah. had to do was like his dance, and that's it. And he would get all the booze. <laughs> that's all he had to do. That's all he had to do, and like that's the easy. Like you said, the crowd was hot, and that's in when they anticipate when the crowd is looking for something. You know, it's like, and you and you just like ah, oh, they just want it so badly, and you give them boom, like. Yeah. 
and and it's just like this and we bring up the talent. This was the damn opener for the pay per view. <laughs> this opened the pay per view like that. If you talk about like a stacked roster at that time, truly, yeah. But but you need, and I'm sure you, you'll agree with this. You need your Danny Davis is in there. You need a guy like that. You need, even though I don't know much about the outlaw Ron Beth a little bit before I started watching, but. You need like that brawler, right? You need like those guys that are, you know, the more the mid tier guys, right? Yeah, you you always have to have those guys because like not everyone's a main eventer, and and other people, you know, got to build to get to the main event. So, yeah. like I said, the Survivor Series, it truly is tradition because it built so many people. You know, yeah. it's like it gave a chance for like the story little stories to go through. You know, the feuds here kept going, but it was just another stop to build more of the feud for, so people can understand and want to be part of and want to keep watching to see where it goes from here. Because yeah. originally the Survivor Series was built because of, they wanted to do Hogan and Andre again. <laughs> That's another way to, to get it in, in a team, exactly. team format. Yeah. Yeah, so you got it. Uh, it's the uh, the survivors was built on Hogan and Andre because they only wrestled that one time at WrestleMania three. Yeah, yeah, but fun match. I recommend it if you want to see like a crowd going crazy for an opener. Watch this one, and everybody just on like on their A game. Everybody. Um. So yeah, that was number two. We're going to our number ones. We're gonna go to Sexy Chino's number one favorite. All time favorite Survivor Series match. Federation champion Brett the Hitman Hart nailing that 300 pound plus Papa Shango. However, as you saw earlier tonight, some interesting developments that definitely will affect you at the Survivor Series. Intercontinental champion now Shawn Michaels. That means it's going to be champion versus champion when he meets you Thanksgiving Eve. You know, he said, he, he, wait, wait, Intercontinental hey, champion. this is my interview. Intercontinental champion. Hey, he's not the man that came out here yeah. earlier tonight and made the promise that he would become the Intercontinental champion. It was Shawn Michaels. He's not the man that came out here tonight and told everybody that at Survivor Series, I'm going to take what you think is rightfully you. Hey, 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 guys, please. Why don't you not talk about it and do something about I it? I got news for you, Jack. I don't know how good your memory is. Do you know who I beat tonight? Do you remember who I beat tonight? Let me remind you a little bit, Hitman. It was the British Bulldog. You remember him, huh? Do you remember him? That's the same guy that humiliated you in front of 80,000 people. And I got news for you. That is nothing. Nothing compared to what Shawn Michaels oh my, is going to so do to you it. at Survivor Series. Get yeah. ready, because you're not going to have that. Hey, 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 you guys, oh, yeah, save it. Come on, pal. Come I, on, for one, it. ladies and gentlemen, will not want to miss that one. Vince. So at number one, Sexy Chino has the, the Montreal screw job match. Shawn Michaels. Oh, no, sorry. This is not the Montreal screw job. This is Shawn Michaels and, and Bret Hart had wrestled before on a Survivor Series. 1992. For the championship, WWF championship, Bret Hart was a champion. This is your number one. This was this shocked me. This was your number one. Why was this your number one and not the screw job? Oh, come on. Were, like this was so good because like you can like I'm telling you, Survivor is about building. A lot of them was about building. Think about it. Bret Hart just was barely become became the world champion. You know, he he was he, he just getting there. And then you got Michaels just barely winning the IC title. And that's and that was supposed to be the future, right? The, yeah. So the, yeah, exactly. Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. So this is the build towards like the future. And then that match is really well done. You know, they go the, the, the back and forth back. And yeah, Michaels' title was not on the line because at the time, if you want to look at it, story, he wasn't the champion. When he was supposed to go, but like he won the title, and the title was never on the line in the contract, so that's why only Brett's title was on the line. I thought you were gonna have this as your your number one because doesn't Santa Claus come out and celebrate with Bret Hart at the end? 
You just want to take away the spoilers. You know? <laughs> 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 no, honestly, yeah, that's what I, I like about this match was the, the beginning. And I was like, it, it built that feud itself. It was the beginning of the feud and the beginning of the new generation, like you said. This was built. I mean, Bret Hart was already the world champion, but I think you're right. It was also building him up like this is the guy now. Like, this is the guy. And that's probably why it wasn't, uh, the IC title wasn't on the line because they wanted Brett to beat him clean, probably. Like, no, you're going to beat him clean. You know, but they probably were like, no, but we don't want to put both titles on you. We want, we're also building this guy over here, Shawn Michaels, that's going to be, end up screwing you <laughs> six years later. <laughs> yeah, that, that was like the future thing. It's like, oh, yeah, Brett. You're going to end up in Montreal because of this Montreal screw job. You know, you guys are going to hate each other because of a comment. And and uh, basically, re real life is going to become actually wrestling life. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sure. That No, overall, you watch this match, you can see the talent on, on both of them. But like I said, it's why I like about this match is the build. Yeah. It's the fact that it's going to build Shawn Michaels to go somewhere. And it's building Bret Hart. They're both getting up there. They're just barely starting the sizzle, man. But that's starting the feud, man. Just leaving the seats for it. Yeah, I was. I'm gonna be honest. I was not a big fan of this match, even back then. I don't know why. I just wasn't a big. I wasn't a big fan of WrestleMania 12. That's a hot take. The the, the Iron Man match. I mean, the ending. Come on, it's awesome ending. But I don't know. I just wasn't a big fan of this one. But I also don't really care for that Montreal screw job one because all they're doing is brawling. <laughs> all they're doing is like brawling in the aisle. Like, man, now that I think of it, have I ever seen a Brett versus Sean match that I loved? You know which one I really liked? It was on Coliseum video, that, that ladder match that he did on one of the Coliseum videos. I like that one. Yeah, you know that was the test match? Yeah. Because like uh, Brett came up with the, the, the actual ladder match because that was uh, the one in Stampy Wrestling. And then Vince told him, okay, just try it at the live event, uh, yeah. you know, at the tapings. And that's where they did it. They just taped it. So they were like kind of testing it out. And that's when Sean screwed him for the first time. Because then at WrestleMania 10, Sean used that ladder match against Razor Ramon. <laughs> and Brett never got to have that a ladder match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, no, uh, it's funny because like you said about that ladder match with Razor and um, and Michaels. is like they said they had some better ladder matches in the live events, I think, in the West Coast. They were saying something about that. Did you go go to any of those? Um, for, no, I don't think I got to go to those. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, that was uh, num your number one all-time favorite Survivor Series match. I'm going to go to my number one now. Oh, matey! Are we ready? Yes, son. We're all very ready for the Survivor Series. Soldiers, not a mercenary. Fair coming. That's right, baby. We are one hundred percent everything there is to say. We're gonna come this oh, Thursday yeah. night, turkeys, and yeah. we're gonna survive. Mercenaries going down, baby. Oh yeah! yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Just a lot of you have certainly put. So at number one, this is a true Matt classic. I've got the Alliance versus the Mercenaries. On the Alliance, we've had probably the worst team captain in the history of Survivor Series matches. Nikolai Volkov <laughs> with my guy Tito Santana and another team I can't another a tag team I can't stand the Bushwhackers but it's got Tito so it was it was saved by Tito versus the Mercenaries captain by Sergeant Slaughter Bora Zukov and the Orient Express are you surprised by this being my number one favorite Survivor Series match you know what's funny is the fact that I started out with 1990. And you're ending when I tonight. <laughs> oh, is that true? Oh, yeah. You started with the grand finale match <laughs> at number five, and I'm ending with it. <laughs> but, but you know, like when I, the reason I have this one, couple reasons. First reason, like I said, I'm a big Tito Santana fan. I love Chico. Probably like, you know, growing up Mexican American, like, like after Hulk Hogan, it was like Hulk Hogan and then Tito when I was a kid. Cause I was like, oh, he's he's brown like me, even though some might might argue Hogan's darker <laughs> than Tito Santana. <laughs> but nonetheless, like 
like I love Tito, but when I was watching WWF, I didn't get to watch when Tito was winning intercontinental championships, winning tag team championships. When I was watching Tito, he was kind of, for lack of a better term, he was kind of doing the J-O-B, right? He was losing to the Warlord, losing to the Barbarian. He was not really like beating a lot of guys. He was just getting kind of jobbed out. Um, so it, this is why part of the reason this is my my favorite Survivor Series match, because Tito is the sole survivor in this match. Um, another thing that I really like about this match, it's we talk about fast. This is like, but this is an elimination in the first like 20, 30 seconds, right? <laughs> yeah, this is super fast. It's like, no, that, that this match was fast. You know, it's like it got to the point. How about that? But no, like I, I I remember watching this match or like oh, when they were calling them. I never like, well, they. I never really paid attention. I, I thought they called them the merchandise, not, not the mercenaries. The merchandise. <laughs> the merchandise. <laughs> so not the mercenaries, the no, merchandise. The merchandise. <laughs> yes. Pendejo. Pendejo. <laughs> just, just joking. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I never get to push that button. But yeah. the merchandise where it says the alliance. <laughs> I never really made that joke. Like, ah, you, oh, oh, it's the merchandise. <laughs> so the merchandise, the Hulk Hogan, uh, giant thumb, foam, foam, thumb, <laughs> axe, and dog, and foam, two by four. <laughs> Man. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, like I said, really quick pace. You, and watching this one in the last week, it definitely, you can tell this was a filler match. Like the where where it's placed, you can tell like, oh, this is where people are gonna go use the restroom, go eat, get their popcorn. And you can tell it's like dead. It's like pretty dead. Like the, the most of the match until the ending where Tito becomes a sole survivor. But I mean, I liked it. I liked how like Tito I think eliminates Boris Zukov with the flying form, and then the Bushwhackers actually are useful. They eliminate what was it Sato? Sato. And then Tito comes in, and man. What's his what's his name? Um Pat um, Tanaka. He takes like an awesome like bump on the flying forearm. Yeah. And then of course you have and then and then you know another thing that I love, even though Slaughter was the heel, I really love like the commentary while Slaughter's like just like eliminating one by one. Like I said, eliminates the worst ever team captain on a survivor series team, Nikolai Volkov. That all he would do is go ah, ah, and throw like those kicks. Like he didn't, that's all he did, like was just squeal and kick and do a jumping kick. But I love like how Monsoon and Piper, I think, was the color guy, right? And how they're like, Yeah, like, oh look, Slaughter's taking his time. He's not rushing. Like he was just like picking his picking and picking them apart. Like everything he did is deliberate. And I, I love, I remember still as a kid, like, oh yeah, like he hit. And he wasn't doing like, you know, this is back in the day where they're doing like basic moves, but he hit someone with a clothesline. He's elbow dro dropping like deliberate elbow drops on Nikolai, you know, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you remember that part of the match, but I love that. Like the commentary and what they're explaining that Slaughter is doing, like he's not in a rush. He's taking his time and picking these guys apart. Yeah, I, I don't remember the exact commentary, but I do remember like Slaughter eliminating people. And I also remember, like, towards the end, is like, I believe, like, Tito won because of a disqualification. Yeah. So at the end, so yeah, Slaughter takes out Nikolai with an elbow drop again. Worst team captain ever on a Survivor Series. Who loses to an elbow drop? Loses to an elbow drop. Slaughter takes out, I think, Butch. I don't know if it was Butch or Luke with the gut buster. And I forgot how he took out the other bushwhacker, but then it's Tito and Slaughter at the end. And I love when Piper's like, oh no, Tito will get him, Tito will get him. And I remember as a kid rooting like, yeah, Tito, Tito's gonna get him, Tito's gonna get him. And but I, in the back of my mind, thinking like, ah, Tito's probably gonna lose, <laughs> lose this. But he he, I mean, he doesn't pin Slaughter because they were building Slaughter towards something bigger, right? WrestleMania seven, yeah. but he Tito wins by disqualification. I think uh was it General Adnan comes in and hits Tito on the, the lower back with the Iraqi flag. Yes. Slaughter puts uh Tito in the in the camel clutch. 
And Howard Finkel, the late great Howard Finkel, says, Sergeant Slaughter, and I love the pause. He like pauses, has been eliminated. And they play the probably one of the my favorite themes ever, Tito Santana theme. And he's the sole survivor. And he went to the grand finale match that you had at number five. But yeah. he, they I remember that game, even talking about it now, it gives me goosebumps. That match, <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's like, uh, yeah, you see. The thing is, like, he hit him with the uh, with the flag because the referee saw it, and instead of like, he the referee was, I believe, if I'm correct, he tap, he tapped Slaughter in the back. Yeah, uh huh. He like to like get off, get off Tito, like it's over. And then Slaughter like puts his hands up in the air, yeah, and he goes no, and that's when like Howard Franco says says that thing. But the funny thing is like, yeah, since since you threw the Santa Claus in there, I'll throw this one in there. It's like. Uh, when um, General Agnon, who did pass away, it, he puts his face with the with his cloth thing. I forgot exactly what it's called. Oh, the headdress. He the covers headdress. his face. He says, and then the, and I think Piper or girl like goes. He looks like one of those girls from like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably couldn't get away with that nowadays, but yeah, man, yeah, awesome. Because that's my fa- fa- number one favorite. Uh, let me go through some of our picks to see like. What what we can notice here? So first of all, like I had two singles matches, the rest uh, Survivor Series team matches. You had you had three singles matches, two Survivor Series matches. You were you were you actually spread out. You were like 1990, 2017, 2018, 92. So you jumped around. I didn't move past 1996. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're living up to your name retro. Yeah, that's true, and that's and that's just because honestly, I couldn't think of any other matches that I was like, oh man, I got to go back and watch that one. But I mean, we'll bring some. I think I have a couple in the, or at least one in the honorable mentions that is, is past two thousand. Um, let's see who who are some guys that were in matches more than once. So we had Shawn Michaels. I had him at with Sid. You had him with in the wild card and against Brett. Um, who else? Razor was in a couple of these matches on my side and the wild card match. Um, yeah, so fun, fun stuff, fun stuff. Um, honorable mentions. So what do you got? Um, I got Bre- Bret Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, nineteen ninety six. That's a good one. That's a lot of people don't forget about that one, right? People talk talk about thirteen, right? WrestleMania thirteen, but yeah. that was a good one too. Yeah, Series. that's before his injuries. Remember that, right? Yeah. <laughs> now you're talking about building that that they were building Stone Cold because before that, what was Stone Cold like? He was the ringmaster, right? So they were start they were starting to like elevate Stone Cold as one of the main guys, you know? Yeah, because like that's when Bret Hart took the break. Remember. Yeah. After WrestleMania, WrestleMania 12, and then he came back at the Survivor Series. And he picked Stone Cold. Stone like, Cold. I want Stone exactly. Cold. I want to face Stone Cold. Yeah, that's a good one. I had the one you mentioned, the the grand finale match, honorable mention. Um, the un- Another honorable mention, the underdogs versus the body Donnas. You remember that one? Yeah, I think the reason I think you won't, you like that match is because... Uh, or was it a uh, skip took the power bomb yeah. off the top rope from Janetti? Yeah, Janetti hit Skip with a super power bomb off the top ropes. That thing was crazy. And uh it's got my boy Hakushi. I always gotta show love to Hakushi. And I also had my only like uh match past the year 2000, Goldberg versus Lesnar. I forgot what year that was, like 2018, 2019. One of those years where where Goldberg beats uh, Lesnar in like one minute. I picked that one just because of the shock value, and I'm a go. I love Goldberg. <laughs> what else you got? You got anything else? I have a uh, uh, Daniel Bryan slash Bryan Danielson versus Brock Lesnar. Oh, I was at, I was at that. I was at that one. That was Staples Center, wasn't it? Yeah, it's Staples Center. That yeah. was well done too. It was like a yeah. they still had that David Goliath thing, and um, uh, I have one more, which was uh. Kurt Angle's team versus Brock Lesnar's team. We would just watch that, and I, and I was explaining exactly why. Yeah, you were, like, getting, like, really into it. 
Like, look at the pace. Look how it picks up. Who was in there? Like, Benoit, the A-Train, Big Show. Yeah, John Cena. A, a young John Cena. This is another guy you bring up. Build up. They're building up Cena. That's what I'm telling you. Survivor Series is about building. Yeah. <laughs> they were building building Cena right there. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, that's uh, that's it for our list and honorable mentions, but... Sexy Chino. I know what's coming. Can you finish the line for me? What am I about to say? It's about the job. That's what's going on. <laughs> it is, speaking of tradition and Thanksgiving, it is tradition around these parts to play a little trivia game at the end of the podcast. I think you might have won your last, the last time you were on here. Mm, maybe the... Was it the last time or was it the other la- uh, the, the the one beforehand? I I don't remember, but you you won one, and um, I think you know I think you're gonna start going on a different trajectory. And I say that because my buddy Tyler he was on a winning streak, undefeated. Now he's on a losing streak. You were on a losing streak. Maybe you guys are like polar opposites, like those magnets that like push away from each other. Oh, like wow. I think you're going to start going in that different trajectory now. What do you think? We'll see, man. Because, like, my memory is not as good as yours anymore. (laughs) It's a fact. (laughs) And that that, uh, says a lot because mine is terrible. But we're going to go take a quick commercial break and come back and put Sexy Chino to the test. His heart is aching. His knees are shaking. It's your first kiss, Charlie Brown, next. NBC's live coverage of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade continues with our host, Willard Scott. Gus, Jack. What's up, Cinderella? Surprise. That's me. That's you. That's Gus. That's Gus. When you buy a $5 book of McDonald's gift certificates, you'll get something extra. Either a free Gus or Jack, the two adorable mice from Walt Disney's classic movie, Cinderella. Now playing in theaters everywhere. They make great gift decorations, fun ornaments, and cuddly play pals. You can get either Gus or Jack with a $5 book of McDonald's gift certificates. And happy holidays from Jack from Gus and... Did you ever? I remember having those. The Cinderella plushy mouse. Did you have those? No, I didn't have those. But I noticed that your sponsors keep getting more expensive. So I wonder if it's, it's a good paycheck coming up. <laughs> uh, no, no, no comment there. No comment. <laughs> Let me push this one. Yeah, dog. All right. So here, here's what we're going to do. Okay. We're, we've done WrestleMania 20 questions. We've done SummerSlam 20 questions. Last time you were on this podcast, I let you off the hook and I gave you an easy, easy peasy one. This time we're going back to 20 questions. Survivor Series 20 question. Let's see. Survivor Series 20 questions. With sexy Gino and Zeus. <laughs> RIP to, to Tiny, Tiny Todd. Tiny, uh... Uh, but yeah, we've got a Survivor Series 20 questions. So yeah. you have 20 questions to find out which performer from a Survivor Series I'm thinking about, right? 20 questions. Okay. Go ahead. Get started. Okay. Is this performer uh, from the 90s? Yes. Is this performer ever been in the main event of Survivor Series? Not a chance. (laughs) (laughs) Far from it. Okay. Is this performer ever won a title? No. Is this performer not from the United States? Uh, is he not from the United States? Um, I'm not sure. I think the the gimmick. Um, I'm not sure. So I'll give you a free one on that one. I'm not sure, but but 
he's not from like he might if he's from he might be he's from the North America. I'll give you that. Oh, he's from North America. He's not European. He's not Ludwig Borga. I'll give you that tip because I know you were thinking of Ludwig Borga like you always do. No, Ludwig Borga. It's a it's another guy that was uh, had a very controversial, uh, basically life. Let's yeah. put it that way. You can find it on YouTube yourself, man. <laughs> but back to the twenty questions. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You're at four questions. All right. Is this performer ever been a final survivor? Um, no, he's never been a final survivor. Okay. So is this performer uh, ever wrestled for WCW? Um, this performer ever wrestled for W? Not in that gimmick, but I think he might have wrestled for for them, like around like uh, after '95, but not in that gimmick. He might have. So that's you know. He might have. Not sure. Okay. This performer ever had a manager? Not the 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 performer that he was. He didn't have a manager. And and the WWF. So he had a manager somewhere else. He might have, but I, not that I know. Not that I can think of. He's too really nice. Is this performer? Uh, rest of the 2000s. No, no way. Okay, so maybe like in an indie show somewhere <laughs> and doing like a lock up and then tagging back out. <laughs> 95. Lock out. Is this performer? Is does this performer ever um, ever been at WrestleMania? I don't think he has. No. Okay. Has this performer ever been at SummerSlam? I don't think so. You're at nine questions. Okay. So. So you know he's from the nineties. I know these women. They don't want to try to narrow it down. Trying. He's never performed at Summertime or WrestleMania. No. Uh, I'll take that as another question, just to for the yeah, sake of speaking. For the, for the speaking <laughs> yeah, sure. Right. That's ten questions. Yeah, no. You kill the music. Come on, bring it back on. All right. There yeah. we go. <laughs> it was helping you concentrate. It was concentrating. Exactly. All right. You're at 10 questions. Okay, I'm going to get 10 questions. So, okay. No WrestleMania, no, no Summer. He's not in I don't know if you want to try narrowing down the Survivor Series. Right. So. So, no. Okay. So he's only been at at Survivor Series, right? Uh, that I know of, yes. That was another question. Okay, that's another question. Seven. All right. Ninety. Mm -hmm. uh, is this performer uh, ever teamed up with the Ultimate Warrior? No. It would be funny. Though. <laughs> <It would. laughs> okay, is this performer uh, ever had a tag team? No. Not as this gimmick. Mm. Right. Mm. 
Wow. Is this performer? So he definitely was a survivor, series, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this performer, how many more questions do I have? You have seven. Is so this this performer? Uh, would you consider this performer top mid card? Hell no. <laughs> That's fourteen. Uh, seven. Is this performer? Uh, is this um, all right? Is this this performer ever got an injury? Not in as this game. Yes. Like, Five more questions. Okay. Yes. So it's a gimmick. Is this performer? Running. Oh, yeah. Is this performer good at promos? He, he's almost as hard as. It's, it's as hard as, um, easy for me to say, hard for to understand them almost as much as it is to understand the warrior, I think. Well, <laughs> Maybe worse than the warrior. Okay. 16. You have four more left. This is it. The worst in the Come on. Worse than the warrior. Uh, to understand, yeah. Worse than the warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Even your shot. <laughs> How about Cheetah? We have four more. Who's the Damn. Um, okay, no. Of nineties. Okay. Is is this perform? You say you have a manager, right? No. Not as this gimmick. Maybe somewhere else he did. And you show sure you wrestled WCW. I, I think he might have. I'm not sure, but I think he, he might have wrestled. Not like a main event or anything. Or he does have prominent a guy, Saturday but night. I think I might have seen him on like a Saturday night, a Nitro. But not as that gimmick. Uh, yeah. You don't want to narrow down the Survivor Series? The which, which 1990s one? Which, so, you you know he's from the nineties. I 90s. know he's from the nineties. I'm trying to, but you say he's never worked with SummerSlam. No. WrestleMania. No. Right, and he does never had a manager. No. Is okay. So he's in. He's from North America. <laughs> Not, I'm trying to tell us, you know, because I'm thinking of a guy, but he has a manager. So that's what killed it. Oh, no. <laughs> He's a He can't understand. Him. This is the we'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Right. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. Fucking thing sucks! Okay. I can't understand it. That's a crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, Cheeto. Four more questions. All right. Yeah. I can't understand. <laughs> What's in the board? So start, start asking anything. All right. Is this. Uh, oh my so I got four more questions. Yeah. Okay. Is this performer? 
Three hundred pounds. No. Okay. Is this performer uh, ever worked MSG? He might have. I'm not sure, but I'm counting them. <laughs> they counted. Well, I'm good. Right on. You got two more. Okay. So maybe you get one question and then just to throw a just random. Throw a random answer. Them. Okay. All right. Is this performer. All right, is is this performer uh wear long tights? Yeah, yeah, his legs were covered. Yeah. He's wearing tights. Okay. Last question. So this has got to be a guess. It's gonna guess. Be, it's gonna be the guess now. He has long tights. He's never worked WrestleMania. That's you can't understand him. <laughs> okay, I got. I'm All gonna right. go. I'm gonna go with it. Sato. It is not Sato. It is not Sato. Oh, he did work at WrestleMania. It is not Sato. This is the performer. That I'm thinking of. This is who it was. I was. <laughs> yeah, he did work WCW. <laughs> yeah, he worked WCW. <laughs> I don't so the the performer. I never said wrestler. Oh my! He, he sure performs, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. Get down. Remember that kid that goes, get down. <laughs> the gobbledygooker was the, the performer, Survivor Series performer. I thought you had a big clue when, you know, he's only been at a Survivor Series, never at a SummerSlam or WrestleMania. I was trying to figure out, but you said you couldn't understand him. So I was like, I, can you understand him when he would talk? That's a good point. <laughs> All right. Any thoughts on the gooker? I like his action figure. <laughs> oh yeah, you just bought that, didn't you? Yeah, I bought that. I, I, I really, when I built like uh, the guy from Mattel that I actually know, he told me like he, when I talked to him first, I thought I really wanted I, I really wanted the copy Google because I'm a I like to collect action figures, especially from wrestling. I said that's a very absurd uh, character, but yeah, I'm really happy I, I got the copy of Google. So, he should be even more ashamed. He just got that figure, like. I just got the that last, figure. The last month. I think. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm trying to think of like all these people that, that actually in the ring wrestling. I'm not thinking. <laughs> See, what you should have asked was, did this did this performer debut when he jumped out of an egg? And then you would have got it. Oh, yeah. Then I would have noticed. Was... <laughs> like, I was thinking long time. I was actually thinking somebody in the ring that got you wrestling. Well, he did have his legs covered, right? You answer all the questions. Yeah, you couldn't answer. He, he can't speak. He, he probably gooks, and he did have long tights. I could. I didn't know how to answer the where is he from because I'm like, well, the guy's Mexican, but I don't know if he was born in Texas or Mexico. It's uh, was it, it Hector? He, uh, Hector, he, Hector, Hector? Hector. He's born. He was born in Texas. And I do remember seeing him on WCW. Yeah, he he was there for like that match with them. Uh, I think he was facing Jericho. Remember when, yeah. like, uh, uh, Eddie? So he was getting to him. I believe it was Jer Jericho. Yeah. But all right. All, all right. right. So I'm, well, um, yeah. You're back on the, on the, the L, on yeah, the L side. On the L side. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna take a quick commercial break and uh, come back and wrap things up. Hopefully, Chino feels better <laughs> after that. On this Brother Electric typewriter with case, unstoppable at $99. On this Coda Phone Beeperless Remote Telephone Answering Machine, unmatchable at $88. Nobody beats the win. Nobody the unbeatable Thanksgiving win. Super Sale now at all 11 Wiz stores. Nobody beats the Wiz, Sexy Chino. You got that? Yeah. Don't even try. You know what's funny? Uh, you said uh, that you weren't sure if you work at MSG. He did. He did? Yeah, I wasn't sure. And WWF? 
Yeah. So th- that would have gave you the answer. That would give me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> or if you would have asked if he uh, ever danced in the ring with me, did this performer ever dance in the ring it, with me? If I would said <laughs> this performer ever danced, you would go. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, that that wraps it up for us. Thanks for coming back on, Chino. Why don't you tell the people? Uh, where they can find you on the social medias and what you got going on. This this, this episode is dropping November 1st. Uh, yeah, you can catch me on at Dance Chino Dance. That's at Dance Chino Dance on Instagram and the Twitter. I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to call it X. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no. But like, yeah, or like at Wrestling Pro Wrestling or at Wrestling PW or like at <laughs> Uh, at Comptomania, I mean, helping out there, or like the Lucha, uh, well, Wrestling Puro. The, you you can see if I if I if I link it, but um, yeah, no, you can catch me there. And like I said, if you want to check out where I'm gonna be at, that's where you can find me. So that's right. Or at your local Jack in the Box. Well, yeah, you know, Hoard. those regular tacos are awesome. You know, Hoarding those regular tacos. <laughs> they, they work. They actually work with your uh, supposed not diet. Oh, know? yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I calories. told them I'm counting calories now. So those, those tacos might, might fit in my diet. But uh, as for me, uh, Retro Tiburon on all the social medias, RetroTiburon.com. You can go there. You can leave a voicemail. I I'll probably play it on the podcast if it's not super racist or <laughs> something really mean, unless it's really funny, then I'll, I'll probably still play it. Um, you can support by, you know, I have merch on RetroTiburon.com. You can buy a mug. There's T-shirts. There's stickers. That's one way to support. Um, what else? I, oh, I also stream now on on YouTube and uh, Retro Tiburon. I stream video games pretty much like three times a week. I also drop pickup videos. I'm actually going to have this guy soon. We're going to, this, this, the pickup video will drop before the podcast. So we're, we're going to record a pickup video. We, we just went to a couple stores um, where I live. So we're going to, we do pickup videos, gaming live streams, and yeah, that's pretty much it. But um, Sexy Chino, any last words before I play us out? Yeah, just like thanks for having me, and um, yeah, I'm still I'm still hitting the L. Let's see what happens. That's what you guys got to keep your eye out on the, the podcast, because does Chino go from an L to a W? Probably not. Okay, but... well, I, I gave it away. Then. <laughs> you just killed the seed. On the, then. See you guys Later. on the other side.